Have you ever been lied to and told that you couldn't give lactated ringers to a patient with hyperkalemia? That's right, I said lied to because that's completely a myth. Balanced solutions like lactated ringers have potassium in it. Lactated ringers has four mill equivalents per liter and things like plasmolite have five. There's a few reasons why this is a myth, but there's a lot to talk about in a short little video. So let me give you the biggest reason. When you have a patient who you need to give fluids and they are hyperkalemic, you have to think about which fluid you're going to use. If you didn't want to use a solution that has potassium in it, then you'd probably use something like normal saline. But you have to remember what normal saline does to cells. And let's just use this as a cell. The majority of potassium is inside cells. As the patient gets more acidotic, there's more protons that are floating around the extracellular space. So what do those protons do? They try to hide out in the cells to maintain neutrality. Well, you can't put a proton in without taking a proton out. And what gets kicked out of the cell is potassium. How does that relate to normal saline? Remember, normal saline causes a hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis. So if you're using that as your resuscitation fluid, you're making the patient acidotic. And if you're making them acidotic, you're making more protons. If you're making more protons, that means more protons are going into the cell. And if more protons are going into the cell, that means more potassium is coming out of the cell causing hyperkalemia. So you're better off using a fluid like lactated ringers, which actually has a mild alkalemic effect. The four mil equivalents is not a lot of potassium compared to the total body stores, and you're not going to cause an acidosis, which is going to worsen the hyperkalemia. I'm curious to know what your practice is for sustaining patients with hyperkalemia. 